good afternoon. Um, I'm going to be reading from Proverbs today. It's going to be a really important word where I'm going to be talking about something that the Bible emphasizes time and time again, and that is the dangers of sinning against the body and what those sins are what is considered a sin against the body so I'm going to be reading from the NLT we're going to keep it really simple today no need to complicate things this is what the Lord wanted me to use so this is what I'm going to use and I'm going to be reading from Proverbs it's going to be chapter 6 starting at verse 20 my son obey your father's commands and don't neglect your mother's instruction keep their words always in your heart tie them around your neck when you walk their counsel will lead you when you sleep they will protect you when you wake up they will advise you for their command is a lamp and their instruction a light their corrective discipline is the way to life the Holy Spirit is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path he wants to guide and direct and order your steps and when you acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways that is exactly what he will do but when you start to guide and order your steps in the direction that you want them to go and when we start to ignore the Holy Spirit's convictions when we start to ignore the counsel of the Almighty when we start to ignore and quench the spirit that conviction becomes less and less and less let's continue verse 24 it will keep you from the immoral woman from the smooth tongue of a promiscuous woman this can be applied to a man as well. It says, don't lust for her beauty. Don't let her coy glances seduce you, for a prostitute will bring you to poverty. I'm going to stop there because God made it so simple. He said, stay away from the immoral woman. Stay away from the woman that thinks it's okay to flirt with you at work when she knows you're married or that man who says he doesn't mind that you're married and still wants to take you to lunch and for coffee. Stay away. Avert your gaze. Out of sight, out of mind. Turn your eyes away from worthless things and remember them no more. Do not be seduced by the smooth tongue of a promiscuous woman because let me tell you something. If you just had an argument with your significant other today, I promise you that the devil... He knows and he's going to put somebody in your path that is going to tell you all the things that you would love to hear from your husband or your wife. Don't fall for that trap. Don't step into that snare and get entangled in something that you cannot easily pull yourself out of. Hear me, please. Hear me, please. In Jesus name, don't lust for her beauty. See, we tend to covet. Isn't it just like us? We look at what everybody else has and we think it must be better over there. It must be better over there. I wonder how she treats her husband. I wonder how he treats his wife. I wish that my husband treated me that way. I wish that my wife would do those things for me. Don't lust for her beauty. Don't let her coy glances seduce you. Those coy glances will take you straight to the pit of hell. For a prostitute will bring you to poverty. I know that sounds harsh, but let's call it like it is. Anybody that is willing to break up your marriage, your household, your family, all for the sake of temptation, all for the sake of a meaningless fling, all for the sake of some sort of temporary pleasure, out of their own selfish wants is, is selling herself short. 
selling himself short. If that's, if that's okay, if you can justify that in your mind, you are selling yourself at no price. It will bring you to poverty. God is not a man that he should lie. He's telling you what will happen. What happens in a marriage in most states all across the United States? Well, we'll just say in this nation, right? What happens or all across the world for that matter when a husband or a wife is the one who got caught in infidelity? That other party usually gets half of the assets. That other party usually gets the house. That other party usually gets the car. It says that a prostitute will bring you to poverty. That other woman, that other man is not concerned about how it's going to affect your household. And how your children's hearts are going to be broken when mom and dad have to split up. And that two-parent household is now a one-parent household. And the dad that they used to wake up to in the morning, they now only get to see on the weekends. Is it worth it? It says sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life, literally. Literally in some cases. Did you know that there's something called a crime of passion? And crimes of passion are supposed to be the most violent crimes out there today. And why does it happen? Because a person who felt like their significant other, their, their, their wife or their husband would never lie to them, would never betray them, would, would never step outside of the marriage. They find out that they were doing that and they feel so be betrayed that they go into a rage, a rage. There's, there's other men that would come after you if they know you're sleeping with their wife and try to take your life. Is it worth it? Verse 27, can a man scoop a flame into his lap and not have his clothes catch on fire? I think we know the answer to that. If you play with fire, chances are nine times out of ten you're going to get burnt. You're going to get burnt. No temporary pleasure is worth forfeiting your soul. No temporary pleasure is worth throwing away your marriage, your household, your family, breaking it apart. And how many of us know what happened to children in broke, that come from broken homes? That's exactly what Satan wants. That's exactly what he wants. What does he come against the most? Marriages, families. But don't be ignorant to the devil's devices. He knows when you're most vulnerable. He knows when you're feeling unwanted at home. He knows when you feel misunderstood at home. He knows when you just slept on the couch last night because your wife didn't want you anywhere near the bed. He knows. And he'll send you what you think you want. But it comes with a price tag I promise you don't want to pay. Can he walk on hot coals and not blister his feet? The answer is no. Now you might say, what, what is it hurting anyone? What is it hurting anyone? Especially if they never find out. I promise you this. If you have that kind of mindset, you need to know one thing. The Bible is clear. It says what is done in the dark, it always comes to the light. So I don't care how much you try to cover it up. I don't care how much you trash the evidence, how much you try to bury it deep. God will unearth the evidence against you. He will not let that go hidden for long. What's another reason why a, a man should not cheat on his spouse? It says in the Bible, your prayers will be hindered. They'll go unanswered. Can you imagine for me, if you will, please, knowing that you're having an adulterous affair and then your mother or your father or the center of your world, somebody that you love more than life itself gets sick and you're praying for their healing and you're praying for them to get better and your prayers are being hindered and not even heard? 
because you continue to live in that wicked, adulterous life. That's what the Bible says will, will happen. Your prayers will go unanswered to the man who is stepping outside of the covenant that him and his wife made before God to sleep or be intimate with another woman or man. So it is with the man who sleeps with another man's wife. He who embraces her will not go unpunished. That's not to say that there isn't forgiveness when you repent of your sin and you are truly sorry for what you have done and you are cut to the heart and you vow before the Lord that you're not going down that path ever again and ask him to take those desires from you. That's different. However, the consequences, they don't get erased. They don't. There will always be consequences to our sin. And they're passed on from generation to generation. So when you say something like, who can it hurt? What, what they don't know won't hurt them. Isn't that like us? When we, when we say that in the world, what they don't know what won't hurt them. No, but it, it, it's hurting your entire generational line for four generations. Was it worth it? He who embraces her will not go unpunished. This goes for a, a woman stepping out on her husband as well. Excuses might be found for a thief who steals because he is starving. But if he is caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole. Even if he has to sell everything in his house. But the man who commits adultery is an utter fool. For he destroys himself. So let's talk about that. The Bible says. A man and a woman. Are supposed to come together first. Let's just clarify that. That's God's natural order. That's God's natural design. That's how he wants it. And who are we to rebel against that. But that's a different topic for another day. So let's talk about this one for a second. What happens. In a godly covenant, it says the man shall leave his mother and father, cleave to his wife, and the two become one, one flesh. Their souls are tied. Their souls, their mind, will, and emotions are tied in a covenant. So what happens when you commit adultery or fornication Sex outside of marriage, sex before marriage, that's what fornication is. What happens then? You still are making a covenant, except because it's outside of God, you've just made a covenant with the, the devil. You've just made a covenant with demons. Now your souls are tied. The two become one. So I would be really careful who you lay down with, number one, because you don't know what kind of demons that person is battling. And now your souls have become tied. So don't be surprised. After sleeping with that individual, that you start having anxiety you've never had a day in your life. That you start having suicidal thoughts that you've never had a day in your life. That you start having homosexual tendencies and desires that you've never had a day in your life. You have entered into a demonic covenant when you commit fornication and adultery. The two still become one. But the man who commits adultery is an utter fool. For he destroys himself. And that goes for a woman who steps outside of her covenant marriage to a man. He will be wounded and disgraced. His shame will never be erased. For the woman's jealous husband will be furious and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. There are people in prison right now that murdered their spouse when they found out that they were being betrayed all those years. Is that justifiable? Absolutely not. But those 
Those are some of the consequences. Those are some of the scenarios that can happen when you betray someone and you come home night after night and tell them how much you love them while you are sleeping with another man or woman outside of that marriage. When you vow to honor your wife, is it honoring to her? To lie to her day after day after day, is it, is it honoring your husband? To lie to them, how much can you really love a person if you can look them in the face every day and lie to them. His shame will never be erased for the woman's jealous husband will be furious and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation nor be satisfied with a payoff of any kind. Again, you can be forgiven of these things but the consequences do not get wiped out or erased. Another warn, warning about immoral woman, this is chapter seven. Follow my advice, my son. Always treasure my commands. Obey my commands and live. Guard my instructions as you guard your own eyes. Tie them on your fingers as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Obey my commands and live. The Lord Jesus Christ promises us not only life, but life more abundantly. But he says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. And if you don't, then you won't. It's really that simple. We say we love God all the time. But how can we love God and justify an adulterous affair? How can we love God and justify fornication outside of marriage when we know that's a sin when we know it grieves his spirit if you love someone you're going to try to do everything that you can to not hurt that individual but God is grieved when we do these things because he knows the consequences that are going to come upon us as a result of our choices and how everyone in that scenario is going to be negatively affected for generations to come. Your children, your children's children, their children, four generations. Was it worth it? Love wisdom like a sister. Make insight a beloved member of your family. Let them protect you from an affair with an immoral woman. I need to stress and emphasize this. Yes, there is forgiveness for the sin of fornication or adultery. However, if you die in that sin, the wages of sin is death. If you die actively practicing that sin, when you know what God's word says, the wages of sin is death. That's not just going into the ground. Your soul is eternal. We are made of body, soul, and spirit. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Your soul cannot die. Your soul belongs to God. Your soul will return to God for judgment. Was it worth it? Let them protect you from an affair with an immoral woman. From listening to the flattery of a promiscuous woman, she will tell you all the things you want to hear. The devil knows what you're lacking at home. The devil knows what you crave and long for the most that you're not getting from your significant other, but none of us are perfect. And I promise you it's not better over there. While I was at the window of my house looking through the curtain, I saw some naive young men and one in particular who lacked common sense. He was crossing the street near the house of an immoral woman, strolling down the path by her house. It was at twilight in the evening as deep darkness fell. The woman approached him seductively dressed and sly of heart. 
She was the brash, rebellious type, never content to stay at home. She is often in the streets and markets soliciting at every corner. She threw her arms around him and kissed him and with a brazen look she said, I've just made my peace offerings and fulfilled my vows. You're the one I was looking for. That woman, that man will make you feel like you are the most beautiful, attractive, intelligent, powerful individual on the planet to get what they want from you. They will tell you all the things that you want to hear and they will mean none of it. Why? Because somebody who is living in immorality is being influenced by Satan. And he does not care if he breaks up your marriage. And he does not care if your children will be without a father. And he does not care whether or not your children are going to end up having all kinds of learning disabilities and, and um, separation anxiety from the divorce that ensues when somebody finds out. All he cares about is stealing, killing, and destroying everything in your life and everything that matters to you. Turn away. Walk away. Delete those numbers from your phone. Delete those photos from your phone. Tell that individual, I cannot see you anymore. Because you know what? No temporary pleasure is worth forfeiting your soul for eternity. None. No temporary pleasure is worth the pain that your husband or your wife is going to go through when they find out that your whole relationship has been a lie. Or the resentment and the bitterness that your children are going to feel when they find out what mom or dad did. Or the rejection or the abandonment that they feel when you go on to start a whole new family with someone else. Was it worth it? She was the brash, rebellious type, never content to stay at home. She is often in the streets and markets soliciting at every corner. She's looking for vulnerability. She's being influenced by the devil and his entourage. She's looking for vulnerability. She wants to cause someone to fall. Don't let that be you. She threw her arms around him and kissed him and with a brazen look, she said, I've just made my peace offerings and fulfilled my vows. You're the one I was looking for. Again, they'll make you feel so special for the moment. And their words are empty flattery and mean nothing. Even the ones that tell you, I will leave my husband or I, I will leave my husband or my wife for you. Would you really want someone that is willing to do that? Because there's going to come a time where they leave you as well for someone else. Just like they did the first time. I came out to find you and here you are. My bed is spread with beautiful blankets with colored sheets of Egyptian linen. I perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. The allure of the devil can be so overpowering. But we are told not to walk away from sexual immorality, but to flee, flee. The moment that you sense that temptation, the moment that this other woman, this other man is flirting with you on the job or just keeps conveniently popping up where they know you will be, flee. Don't entertain it. Don't entertain it at all. Don't give the devil a foothold to destroy you and your life. Because he'll do it. You give the devil an inch, he's taken a mile, if not more, for generations. 
uh, perfume my bed with myrrhs, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink our fill of love until morning. Let's enjoy each other's caresses, for my husband is not at home. He's away on a long trip. He has taken a wallet full of money with him and won't return until later this month. So she seduced him with her pretty speech and enticed him with her flattery. Again, telling him or her all the things that they need to hear to fall into the trap or the snare. And they mean none of those words coming out of their mouth. And even if they did, it wouldn't even matter. It's not, worth, it's not worth breaking up your home. It's not worth all the consequences that will follow again for generations to come. He followed her at once like an ox going to the slaughter. He doesn't even know. His life as he knows it is over. Everything is about to change because when it comes out of darkness into the Lord's marvelous light, what he has done, his entire life will fall apart. Everything that he took years to build will be undone in a moment. Like an ox going to the slaughter, he was like a stag caught in a trap awaiting the arrow that would pierce its heart. See, when we are in it for the moment, we're so engrossed with that temporary pleasure or that enticement that we're not thinking about how this is going to affect everyone in this scenario. We are driven in that moment by selfishness, what we want, not how it's going to affect others. Not how it's going to destroy a household. Not how it's going to break the hearts of our children. He was like a bird flying into a snare. Little knowing it would cost him his life. Here's another thing. The two become one. Let's say that you lay down with somebody whose body is being attacked by infirmity, sickness, pestilence, disease. The two become one. Your souls are tied in a demonic covenant. So when you lay down with that other individual, you might have been healthy your whole life. And all of a sudden, all these things are breaking out. All these health problems that you never had before. And the problem with this is it's spiritual. So it's not a regular sickness or disease. You can't just clear it up. When you go to the doctor, a lot of times they're going to tell you, well, we're not really sure what it is, but let's try this and let's try that. So you're on all these trial runs and nothing is working out. Why? Because this is the consequences of sin. It's a spiritual sickness. You've tied your soul, your mind, will, and emotions to another individual. You've sinned against your own body. You've defiled the temple of the living God. And now he's let sickness come upon you. But that sickness doesn't just stop with you because if you go on to have children with this individual or later on, those children can be born with all kinds of defects and infirmities and sickness and pestilence and disease. It gets passed on. It's called a generational curse. Those things can be broken off of your bloodline in the name of Jesus. But there are still consequences. And they don't go away just because you are forgiven. He was like a bird flying into a snare, little knowing it would cost him his life. So listen to me, my sons, and pay attention to my words. Don't let your heart stray away toward her. Don't wander down her wayward path, for she has been the ruin of many Many men have been her victims. Her house is the road to the grave. Her bedroom is the den of death. I think that's enough. A lot of times we get so upset because we think that God is just um, throwing all these demands at us. You, you expect us to live a certain way and God just wants to control my life. And, you know, I'll give that up, but I won't give this up. You know, I, I'll... I'll live right over here, but I, I'm not giving up this relationship. 
because I love this individual. No, you don't. If you're living in an adulterous affair, if you're cheating on your husband of or wife, if you are fornicating outside of a marriage covenant, you are being driven by lust, not love. And there is a big difference. And lust will destroy you from the inside out because, again, you are sinning against your own body. And the Bible says that is the worst of its kind. 